Hello everyone, welcome back to On The Spot STEM. Today we'll be going over AMC 10 12B last minute tips and strategies. And some of the strategies I'm going to be telling you um, are more catered towards the B, but about 90% of the content here can be catered towards both tests. But since the AMC 10A is already done, we'll be talking more about the AMC 10 12B. So what we're going to talk about, the 10, uh, we're going to be talking about the 10 and 12A test that was taking last Thursday. And then we'll be talking about predictions for 10 and 12B. And then we'll be talking about the different types of test strategies and uh, what score you should be aiming for given what your goal is. And then we'll also be talking about what you should do the day before the test. And this is a highly controversial topic, so we'll just offer our input on it. So 10 and 12B predictions. Uh, the general consensus was that AMC 12A was easier than normal this time. And I didn't take the AMC 10A, I took the 12A, but um, from what I heard, the AMC 10A was a bit harder maybe, since usually like number 15 on 12A, if there's overlap, it would be like number 19 or 20 on uh, 10A, but this time number 18 on 12A was only number 20 on 10A, so the difficulty gap uh, didn't seem as large as, as it normally should have been. And so in the past few years, uh, this isn't like correlate, this isn't causation or anything, but the correlation is that an easy A has given a harder B. And even though the tests are independent of each other, I guess it sort of makes sense from a correlational point of view. Because if, because MA doesn't want to administer two easier than normal tests on the same year. So I guess they made one test harder, um, just for balance. Uh, but AMC tests, like, they aren't made knowing that, oh, this is going to be a problem on AMC 10A, or this is going to be a problem on AMC 12B. Uh, like, the distribution and the problems that are required in each test aren't decided until much later and it's more like random than it is um, like something that MAA plans. And let's talk cutoffs now. So uh, AMC 10 has been moving towards uh, less than 100 cutoff almost, one, 110 cutoff almost every test. And uh, I think last year they took, instead of 2.5%, they took actually 3.5%, which is actually the reason why the AMC 10A cutoff was like 103.5 of the A. If they took only 2.5%, I think it would have been like 111 or something. So MAA is becoming a lot more lenient on 10A AMI qualification, and AMC 12 has uh, stayed about at about 5%, and it's been around 90 plus or minus 6. Um, for the 12A, I think cutoff will probably be around 90, 94.5 or 96. Um, but a lot of people usually overestimate the AMI cutoff, so don't take this. So just take this with a grain of salt. And I think AMC 10A cutoff will probably be around uh, 105, 107.5 or 108. Uh, but we'll see. And then distribution on 10 and 12A. I believe there's only like two geo problems on 10A and three on 12A. Uh, I don't remember for sure. But there was a very small amount of geo and it was apparent that there was a lot of combo. And so again, the tests are independent of each other. But um, I think 10B or 12B might be a bit more balanced in terms of geo and combo and all that. But these tests are made like they're started to make uh, three years in advance. So you really can't tell what will be on the B if you know what's on the A. It's just speculation at this point. And so let's talk test strategies now. Um, so there are three strategies basically, and I'll go over what each of them are. And they're the Horde, they're the Balanced, and they're the Conservative. And then uh, we'll be talking about what you should be doing, given that you're either aiming for aiming qualification or a solid score for Olympiad qualification, which is JMO and USMO. So the first one is the Horde, and I nicknamed this the Horde because you essentially flood the entire test. Um, some people even go reverse, but the base point is that you go very aggressive on whatever you want to get. So if you want to uh, get a good score for Olympiad, you go aggressive on 1 to 20 in the first half an hour, and then you spend the rest, um, you spend like another half an hour on the last five and try to get three of them, two, three of them, and then spend like the last 10 minutes teching or something, or just last five minutes. And then if you want to get Amy, uh, I guess go aggressive on 1 to 15, and then get a few in the last 10. And if you're going on the 12, then just go aggressive on the first 10, and then try to get like a few in the in 11 through 20. Um, so this is a very high risk, high reward thing, since you only have a few minutes to check. So if you get a bunch of them wrong on your first try, um, if you're applying this strategy, you're going very aggressive, so you're not really ret retreating and going back, but you're more going forward. But you're solving a lot of problems this way. And so, um, if you like your A score, 
if you're content with that in terms of whatever you want then i think you should be trying to do something like this on the b or maybe going the balanced way but um there's really no point going conservative if you're already content with one of your scores so it's better to go more aggressive on the other one because there's a probability that you get a much higher score and if you get a lower score you're already fine with your first score a lot of people go um very aggressive on the a and then conservative on the b but i don't really like that as much because i'd rather um do well on the a using a conservative method that i'm uh, content with and then go more aggressive on the b so our second strategy is the balanced and this is the semi-conservative strategy so you spend about 45 50 minutes on 1 through 20 or 1 to 15 depending on which test or what you're aiming for whether it's olympiad qualification or a good score for olympiad or whether it's just for amu qualification and then maybe you spend like 10 minutes trying to solve one or two in the last few and then you just check the rest of the test i think you'll have about 15 minutes to check and so if you can consistently solve uh, around 20 plus then it's a good way to land between 120 and 130 because you'll have some time to check for sillies too uh, there's always going to be variation present in this method since you have 15 minutes to check but it should be a lot less variation than what you're getting from the horde and educated guesses are, i guess fi are fine to make you're not gonna you probably aren't gonna leave everything blank using the strategy um you you'll be looking over a lot of the problems almost all the problems and you'll be tr probably getting an idea of what the answer might lie within for each of these problems so the last one is the conservative and this is no risks at all uh, you spend about an hour a bit more than an hour on 1 through 15 or 1 through 20 depending on what you're going for and then checking those and then you spend the last uh, 5 to 10 minutes either checking or trying to get one more and normally i guess you don't have to check using this strategy you're going to be checking in the first hour so that's why you spend so long on the first 15 or first 20 and then you leave the rest blank um there's no point wasting your time looking or reading the other problems and trying to figure them out if you know that you're not going to be solving them so just leave them blank and you're going to get 1.5 points for each uh, problem on that and don't waste time on guessing so from the strategy let's just talk about what you can go for um if you if you're trying to go for a decent score for uh amc 10 or amc 12 for olympiad then i think a 2005 split is 127.5 which is uh which is pretty good it's not like 138 plus which is pretty ideal for olympiad but 127.5 still sets you up in a good position for amy and uh 1906 also gets 123 which is pretty good and then 2104 will get 132 which is also very good and then if you want to make amy off the 10 a 1708 split gets you 114 and zero just means that you get zero wrong and then 17 correct and then eight blank and then 1609 probably works too since that's a 109.5 and cutoffs have been decreasing lately. Um, a 14011 split for the AMC 12 gets you 100.5, which is always good enough for Amy. Um, a 13012 split, which is 13 right and then 12 blank, uh, I think that gets you a 96, which is usually good enough these days. And so in this strategy you're checking everything you're checking uh very conservatively and you're doing problems really conservatively so that's why it's a conservative and it's essentially the bare minimum to get what you want and a good analogy is that um when comparing the conservative to the horde it's like the hare and the turtle in in their in the famous folklore and so the turtle goes very slow it goes very conservative and the hare goes very fast but um sillies can screw you over in the horde so you have to be careful if you're applying that so the day before the test, what you should do? Uh, there are a lot of things that people say to do or people say not to do. Um, I've noticed that there's not really much variation. It's more just psychological and placebo. So a lot of people say to take it super chill or take or just like do some problems the day before the test to warm up. Um, I've done both before competitions and like both strategies have yielded me good results in on the next day for the competition. So just do whatever suits you. Do whatever you feel comfortable with. Don't go off someone else's advice and do something and feel guilty for doing it, but just do what you think would work for you. And try to get a decent amount of sleep, um, like 7 to 8 hours is ideal, probably more actually. Uh, but sleep doesn't really affect performance unless you get less than 4 hours. If you get less than 4 hours, then you're like sleep deprived, but otherwise, um, like a lot of high schoolers don't even sleep that much every day, so it won't be much deviation from normal. So this is more psychological. So just make sure that you do something that 
you think that you're doing well and that you think that it's going to help you. So that's pretty much all. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, comment them down below. If you want to see our videos on the AMC 10 and 12A, we made a few and they're on our channel and you can search them up. And um, if you have any friends taking the AMC 10 or 12B, then link them this video too because it will be pretty helpful. So thank you.